10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Look up an Italian Space Agency's podcast. The characters and exploits of man's great adventure to conquer space. Buzz Aldrin, an icon of the 20th century. November 1966, on the Gemini 12 orbital mission, when Buzz Aldrin took the first selfie ever in space. He snapped himself while performing three periods of extravehicular activity lasting 5 hours and 30 minutes, smashing all previous spacewalking records. Buzz, what a bizarre name. Edwin Eugene Aldrin Jr. was born in New Jersey, USA in 1930. His nickname originated in childhood. His little sister mispronounced the word brother as buzzer. His family shortened it to Buzz. Aldrin, an aerospace engineer, loved the sound of it and adopted it. His nickname is the basis of the Buzz Lightyear character in Disney's Toy Story saga. Aldrin, who graduated with a Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering, has a history that in some ways matches that of Neil Armstrong. Together they were on the Apollo 11 mission and they were both jet fighter pilots during the Korean War. However, they were temperamentally different. Neil was low-key and reserved, while Buzz was restless and at times grumpy. He was also known as Dr. Rendezvous because of his doctoral thesis whose subject was the study of bringing piloted spacecraft into close proximity with each other. A rendezvous indeed. In his professional life, Aldrin went through a series of encounters and faces. He honed his skills and competencies while being part of NASA's Project Gemini. Being both Gemini 9 and Gemini 12, highly formative missions. Buzz was able to live through very demanding training periods, but also to develop plans to bring people to Mars faster, thanks to a shorter and more linear trajectory that would allow for less fuel to be burned. Passionate about space simulation strategy games, Buzz was very much loved by the film industry. From The Simpson to Futurama, where he guest starred as himself, though not on a regular basis. But this is not all. Buzz was recognized with medals and honors across the world for his distinguished service. He was inducted into various halls of fame and decorated with the Order of the Merit of the Italian Republic. All of this thanks to that incredible journey aboard Apollo 11. Buzz was one of the memorable protagonists of that July night in 1969, when Tito Stagno anchoring the Rai Radio Televisione Italiana network coverage of the Apollo 11 mission told a mesmerized audience that a miracle was taking place some 384,000 kilometers away. Ha toccato! Ha toccato il suono lunare! Technically, Buzz Aldrin was the second person to set foot on the moon after Neil, but his ranking is a mere numerical exercise. That astronaut portrayed in a set of breathtaking photographs taken by the Apollo 11 commander himself has made history. 
That man photographed coming down the ladder of the lunar module Eagle and then walking on the surface of the moon wearing his giant white spacesuit is among the unforgettable icons of the 20th century. We knew we were continuing to burn fuel, Aldrin recounted. We knew what we had, then we heard. 30 seconds left. If we ran out of fuel, we knew it would be a hard landing. I saw dust creating a haze. Not particles, but a haze that went out. Dust the engine was picking up. Then an indicator light went on, showing that at least one of the probes standing from Eagle's foot pads had touched the surface, and then he called out, Contact light! Seconds later came Neil's famed radio announcement to Mission Control that the Eagle had landed. We shook hands and we smiled. We copy you down, Eagle. Houston, uh... Tranquility base here. The Eagle has landed. Roger, Tranquility. We copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. Aldin marked an epoch. He walked on the moon for about 2 hours and 15 minutes, taking photos and collecting lunar samples to inform scientific discoveries. In total, he spent nearly 290 hours in space, eight of them performing extravehicular activities. To our knowledge, Buzz, a Presbyterian, was the first and only person to hold a small religious ceremony to say grace near the American flag he planted on the moon. His first words were, beautiful view. In 1971, Aldrin, just like Armstrong, retired from active duty, while Michael Collins, the third Apollo 11 crew member, left a year earlier. His mission on Earth, following his years with NASA, was a very difficult one. After his mother's tragic suicide, Buzz set on another painful and complicated journey where he battled against depression, alcoholism, and trouble with the law. Eventually, he rediscovered purpose in his life. He wrote his autobiography in 1978, went into rehabilitation, and was able to look up into the sky again. He also engaged in sci-fi with writer John Barnes. In 2002, U.S. President George W. Bush appointed him to serve on the Presidential Commission on the Future of the United States Aerospace Industry. Aldrin filed several patents, a modular space station facility, the Star Booster family of reusable flyback rocket boosters, and multiple space crew modules. He also founded Shear Space Foundation, a non-profit organization devoted to advancing space education, exploration, and affordable space flight experiences. Buzz is a passionate traveler, who despite his old age went on a journey to the North Pole. We landed, explored, got back up again, rendezvoused, came back. That's 50 years of non-progress. I think we all ought to be a little ashamed that we can't do better than that. He's a complex personality. Buzz has had four wives, the last one 30 years his junior, a legal fight with two of his children over whether he was competent to manage his affairs, artifacts from his Apollo 11 personal collection auctioned off at astronomical prices, 
The punch he landed on Bar Sibrel, an American conspiracy theorist and filmmaker committed to disprove the Apollo 11 moon landing. And yet, this is the same man who also wrote several children's books and narrating space adventures from the heart. Mars has been his great passion for several decades now. When participating in Wired, a festival held in Milan in 2017, Aldrin explained uh, quite clearly his vision according to which we should establish habitation but permanent habitation on Mars through continuous missions and we should be settlers, not just visitors. No flags and footprints this time, he said. From the moon to infinity, this is Buzz, Buzz Aldrin. listening to Look Up, an Italian space agency's podcast, the characters and exploits of man's great adventure to conquer space. Baz Aldrin, an icon of the 20th century. Script, Daniela Amenta. Post-production, Paola Pagone. Editorial coordination, Giuseppina Pulcrano and Manuela Proietti.